technology screens and our FOE PT company. I have no idea why I literally just left that on because I know I got to go swap over here and, and turn it out, turn it off. Ugh. Ugh. My computer speaker, so I'm playing some copyrighted music and I really don't need it right now because we're doing a demonstration on this. All right, so we got this outdoor projection screen paint. I can't wait to show this off because again, we've done dozens and dozens and dozens of videos on outdoor projector screen paints, but this one's a lot different. Uh, this one will allow you to be able to convert an inflatable projection screen into like an OLED screen. And as I told you before, the OLED the, um, inflatable screens are temperamental, very temperamental. You know, the, the PVC can be difficult. Um, the front and rear uh, mesh can be difficult. You don't paint that stuff right. Your screen can come out really blotchy. And you'll see light areas, you'll see dark areas, it's just an uneven coat. On top of that, the technology allows you to be used your projection screens in much earlier times of the day where most projection screens can't be fired up around that time. And you have to make sure, like I said, if you're doing, you're painting an inflatable screen, you're doing an outdoor projection screen, you have to make sure that this screen has, this paint or product has a ton of test underneath of it. You can't just paint a screen, stick it outside, and go, oh, voila, it's weatherproof. No, a lot of things can go wrong. So those screens need to be out there for at least about a year or so, so you can understand exactly how this thing is going to react to all different sorts of elements. And all the technology we developed on outdoor, the experience we have in outdoor technology, I know we're inside right now, but all the experience we have in outdoor, we're going to be outside today anyway. But anyway, as soon as I get done taking care of my business, this is going outside. But um, as I said before, the experience we have in outdoor, the do's and don'ts, this is the experience we've been able to incorporate into the technology we have now. That's experience. But if you don't have that experience, if you're a newbie and you're making outdoor screen paints and you have this screen outside, there is a ton of demonstrations that must be done. On top of that, you don't see it in the specification sheets. That's another problem right there. You have The specification sheets for an outdoor screen is completely different from specification sheets inside. So if I go to your site and I don't see anything there, what time of the day does it fire up because it's an activation time, what type of projectors would it react to, if it's even ultra short though compatible, which a lot of people like these ultra short throws now outside, I told you the reason behind that. There is a lot of things that you need to know uh, whether this screen is going to work or not outside. Um, the elements could crack, damage the screen, the heat could fade the screen, there's a lot of things could go wrong out there besides inside and on top of that you got you got everyday wildlife that birds of crap and whatever i don't know what that was was spray on the side of the screen just about every day go out there with a garden hose wash it down and it's done and one of the tests you have to do is folding it up because sometimes people have a surface that's not going to be stationary they're going to take it down put it back up take it down put it back down oh it's going to take a lot of abuse you see the surface we have here the surface is, has been taken down, it's crumbled up, it's thrown in the corner, it's taken down, it's crumbled up, it's thrown in the corner. That's why you see all the wrinkles in it. Because that's one of the tests we're putting the product through. We're crumbling it up and seeing exactly how much abuse it can take. Because that's one of the things you're going to do with your screen, especially when they're 100 inches and they're not, they're not stationary screens. A stationary screen is going to be a screen that's going to be like... Um, 150s, 160s, 180s, you're not taking that down over and over again, dragging it to your house, you know, just don't leave it out there. But a 100 inch screen, a 50 screen, 50 inch screen, these are screens you're going to take down. Chances are you're probably not going to leave them out there. And that's, you're going to run the risk of what's going to happen, if the screen's going to crack, if it's going to peel, especially if you're painting a different surface, if it's PVC, if it's tarp, if it's fiberglass. If it's wood, it could be anything. Is the screen going to crack or peel? And you have to have those tests. You can't just coat this to an inflatable surface and go, voila, it's weatherproof. No, it don't work that way. It does not work that way at all. And we've seen people Ask do that. Offers flexible hours and weekend appointments for supermodels just like you. Fancy feast. Chef inspired. Another screen that has an interesting temperamental issue is um, it's inflatable, not inflatable, um, motorized. Motorized screens get fickly outside. It can act funny outside. And we had to do dozens of those. So on top of that, you're gonna have to also be able to troubleshoot 
the screen also too. And not only the screen, but the structure itself. Because anytime someone's building outside, they want to see exactly how much knowledge you have on basically setting up this particular screen outside. And then when it comes to motorized screens, motorized screens are a little differently because keep in mind, the wind that hits the screen, the screen is very light. Some of them have a very light bar at the bottom to cause the screen to move around. You're going to have air outside more than you're going to have inside. So your screen's going to actually move around quite a bit. You have to be to know exactly what you're doing, what projectors, what type of projectors you're going to need for the environment. They're all not going to require long throws. So you got to remember that too. But most importantly, that your product can withstand one year of weather. And if you haven't had a screen stationary outside for one year to inspect it every day to make sure that screen's going to work or to fix any possibilities of any problems that might rise up, you don't know if that screen's going to work. Just because you display it and it pops up an image doesn't mean it works. There we go. So we're going to be doing pretty soon. We're going to be doing, I got some of the formula here to do what I need to do, but we need a much bigger surface. This is nice. We're going to be using this surface as a beat down surface. I'm going to literally beat the crap out of it. See how much punishment it can take. I do have to test against PVC because we don't use a soft, unstationary PVC, the 100 inch PVCs. We usually just deny those from the door. But I want to test this new formula we got and see what happens. If we get one that works, that's the brand we're going to recommend, and the rest of them we don't. Just like we do with the um, knockoff projectors. We may have some that may work, we may have some that don't. But we stick to the uh, name brand projectors, and when we say name brands only, we only stick to those name brands only. The only way a knockoff projector will ever get a chance to end up on that list, unless we had it for a couple years. And the Magsonics, we've had those for years. That's why we, we approved that projector. Anything else, we don't know how it's going to react. That thing is, that projector's been tested on for everything we designed. So, the outside, yeah, it's going to go through some punishment. Now, the best way for us to test the screen, to make sure it's weatherproof, is to take the screen, cut a slab of it off, and, and submerge it underwater, and keep it in there for a couple months. Now, since we've done all this stuff already, we've done all this testing, we've been outside multiple times, we know how it works. The only grounds that we're testing on that we usually don't test is a soft PVC. That's the only ones we don't we don't we don't um we don't we don't test on because again the surface it's kind of funny. And again, if it's if it's stationary, fantastic. It's not going anywhere. But the minute you take that thing off and you fold it up, there could be problems. That's the one thing we have to test. Now this is gonna be fantastic for those of you who have inflatables, and a lot of you have inflatables. And you're looking at that washed out screen, you can't get your color, can't get your contrast, and you definitely will be running that thing at four at five o'clock to six o'clock. That's just not gonna happen. You don't you do know that you're probably gonna end up spending the money for a more expensive high lumen high lumen projector because you're dealing with outside. And still all in all, you're gonna wash the screen out even faster. So we're gonna show some demonstrations once we get everything set up and ready to go. You'll get a chance to see my Chrissy LX. It's an LX uh, 700. It's a 6500 lumen projector. It's the best one that came to the roadhouse. Your machine don't pick up on that. It don't pick up on nothing. The reason why we got that machine up because again, we the, the venues and all that, because of companies. Companies will be using these projectors for venues, events, weddings, all that stuff. What are they gonna be doing with it? What I don't know. And they're gonna be using some big boy machines. Now this is coated on to a tablecloth. That's what it's coated on to. I've already did the demonstration already. We're not gonna go over again. We've done this before. We took a black surface. We're gonna be doing that in demonstrations. You'll see, let's take a black surface, put it against the screen. It's called a black on black demonstration. So it's very important because we're gonna make sure you, at the end of the day, that you feel you're not being shipped a piece of fabric. That's just a regular piece of fabric. That's why we do those tests. Uh, the acoustic screens, the update I put in there, the acoustic screens are going to change. So the acoustic technology we developed is for indoor-outdoor, so is this technology too, but it's indoor-outdoor, sound can travel through it, all that good stuff. We pre-coat those screens. So now we're going to pre-coat them with the new outdoor technology. This will make them indoor too, but there's no point in making a separate formula for the acoustics. And because the screen has, uh, one of the parts of the screen's capabilities, it can go outside. 
So, just coded with this stuff. So it's just a pre-coded string. That's what it becomes. It's still acoustic. It's just pre-coded. Work you don't have to do. So you can choose to get the acoustic, something that's already coded, or you can do it yourself. It's up to you how you do it. This is going to be a spray-on application only. It has to be because we're going to be working with, or the customer will be working with inflatable screens. You do not want to roll over a front and rear white mesh inflatable screen. It's going to go so badly it's not even funny. You got to remember, this is a surface that's front and rear. It's not basically like, okay, it's not like it's going to be like, if you paint this, just come with it for this way. Like acoustic screens. You have to have a certain chemical to do acoustics. You can't roll over that stuff with acrylic. You know what happens? Because the stuff they use in basic screen paint, the acrylic they use in basic screen paint will clog the holes in an acoustic screen. I know, we did the test already. The reason for kids, we're always going to make the future. Maybe with climate change, we worry a lot of... So that's a problem. It's going to clog the holes, and then your screen's going to have a kind of a muffle effect. You ever seen somebody drive by in a car, and their trunk's not properly insulated for the speaker? They make the boom, boom, boom. That's what it's going to sound like coming out the other. It's going to be muffled. Kind of like when your ears get clogged when you go to the pool, like that. So, again, you need a special coating to do acoustics, which, again, someone tried that, and it didn't go well. Because again, we explained to him that it's an acoustic screen. It has these little micro holes in the screen and sound needs to travel through them. So if you can't get light to travel through it, guess what other thing's not gonna come through? Sound will come through. So we had an acoustic spray that will allow you to turn. We had a surface that came with this acoustic kit. It came with a surface, it came with this spray, and you can actually spray this on make your own acoustic screens. And then we basically advise people not to use these particular uh, acrylic paints that they have on the market that they're trying to claim that will work on your acoustic screen, which they won't, and this will clog the screen. If light can't transfer through it, guess what else won't transfer through it? Sound. Can't fix every solution with just the same product. You have to be to go out there, engineer, make new products, and you have to research the surface that you're actually applying this to to make sure it's gonna marry with the surface, it's gonna marry with the environment, it's gonna marry with the projector, all that plays a part. So fast, quick ideas don't work. So that chemical we have can code acoustics. So basically, like I said, the acoustic screen is going to be converted to this technology, but it's going to be a pre-coded. Uh, we are going to alter and change the labels just a little bit. I like that design, but the name of it, because it's going to be a pre-coded. Uh, what do you call these things again? We make so much stuff, I swear. I can, I'm surprised I can keep track of all the names of the stuff we make at the end of the day. I wrote that thing down. It's supposed to be, it's the, um, oh my goodness. Name's clogged up. F L E. Is it the Phantom? No, it's not the Phantom. Phantom's the other one. Phantom's the Challenger. Yeah, sometimes you need to design a lot of stuff. Can't even think of the name of it. Oh, okay. Let's see, it's an FOE, it's an FOE. It's not a, it's not a what you call it's not a phantom. You redesigned something and bring it back? Let me go check her. Go on my machine, so sitting here going, duh, what do you call this thing? You got so many names and so much stuff, it's not even funny. What do you call this thing? Oh, that's beautiful. How did he do that? How did he do that? Sorry, people. Back here arguing with technology. Product
Okay, here we go. Superior Infinity Black outside. Sheesh. Because you know how much stuff I develop in a day? Literally, half the stuff you don't even know about because I don't even mention it on camera. So I got a lot of stuff going on in my head right now. I'm still even making new formulas. Oh shit, man, I can talk. I'm making new formulas for the um the uh which one called screen paint? The one that has the different colors, the prism. I still got four paints to make out of that. So I'm engineering those right there. We're working on this product right here. We have the acoustics already done. I still have the church paint dedication I had to do. I got a lot of stuff going on in my head I got to do right now. And on top of that, I'm building structures at the same time. We got a curved cardboard projection screen. I'm working on two pieces right now. And now I just added more to the plate by basically designing a front and rear computer screen that we're designing for my uh, Fallout setup. So, yeah. So, once in a while, I do forget when I got like 20 or 30 chemicals bouncing around in my head, I got to figure out exactly which one is which. But yeah, this is going. This is the Infinity because remember it's supposed to be the Infinity Seven, but we're going to change the Infinity Seven over to an outdoor screen paint. And since the Alphas did have the ability, we removed it altogether. We don't want to make things too complicated. So instead of making a separate screen paint for the acoustics, we're going to pre-coat it with this technology. Now the acoustics come in now at 150 inches and 100 inches. The 100 inch I'm going to have on site because again, it's, oh, I'm going to take both of them. I'll take both of them. But it does come in a 100 inch also. Uh, as you notice, our summer sale, we gave a date for our summer sale, so it's not going to be at the end of the summer. Actually, it ends on, uh, it's plenty of time. It ends on, I think it's June. June the 22nd, that's when it ends. And this is also too when that date hits it's also changed for the company because the major changes are going through because we're going to be back and forth um on different sites so there's some changes coming up and these changes also to apply to who i'm talking to outside who i'm doing business with out there the same changes will affect back and forth so the gallons will be removed completely off the site the only thing that will have a gallon not completely the only thing that will have a gallon it will be the outside because it's going to be required because people usually are doing much bigger screens outside than inside. You're most likely to get somebody with a 250 inch screen outside than a 250 inch screen inside. So those are state, but the gallons and this product will no longer be existing. It'll only be available for companies only because they're usually ordered that. Hey, I don't want to hear it. Are you supposed to be over there? No, right? All right, catch up. Come on. And you hear him back there trying to argue with his like, what? What? What do you mean, what? You're not supposed to be over there. Uh, 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 uh. Leave that alone, too. Your home Thank you. Out with <laughs> <laughs> the order. 24-7 lasting order protection. Oh, it smells so good. That is, leave that alone. I was just, I'm gonna leave that alone. It's a joke, I know it is, but I'm gonna leave that alone. Oh man. Oh yeah, by the way, on our projector, we're on our 600 by 800 720p SVGA projector, Old Faithful. I like using her, because again, like I said, we got the big boy machines over there. Are these required? No, we don't need to have to use them at all, period. Now, if you're using the outdoor technology, which we're designing, you can use for indoor, but majority of the strong points will be outside. Uh, this, uh, if you're using it with a projector of a thousand lumens, like the one I'm using in the demonstration, we advise after about six o'clock, it depends on, I'm trying to get this thing to activate at five. And we get this thing to fire up at five o'clock, which you're gonna be outside today, because I wanna test on the surface. If we get it to fire up at five o'clock, that'd be fantastic. Five o'clock at a thousand lumens, that'd be extremely good. So let's see what happens. So we get it at a thousand lumens. Oh man, that'd be fantastic. Right. We got to bring it back. The backyard, it's got to be roughly. We're gonna over. We're gonna overhit the screen. But it doesn't make a difference. We just have to see an image from that distance. So the backyard is roughly probably about a good maybe 20 feet back. That's good. That's enough room to play. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put it in there and bring it back 20 feet. See if it picks up. So. At a thousand, at a thousand would be fantastic. That'd be excellent. But anyway, let's see what happens. We'll be run that test real quick. See what happens. If it does run, then we can change our specification sheet on the time of day that you can use this. Um, hopefully, we can get it at five o'clock at a thousand lumens. That'd be nice. 
And I guess if we're going to do it, if it's a five o'clock at a thousand, that means that at four we can pick up at five thousand lumens easily. So we can pick up at four or five thousand. Four o'clock and at five o'clock pick up at a thousand. That'd be fantastic. But most likely, it probably, if it does, doesn't go out that well, then we'll probably end up getting like um, uh, six o'clock at five thousand. And then after six, like seven o'clock at 1,000. Now, if people make screen paints, you don't understand what I'm talking about, you haven't tested your stuff. You should understand exactly what I'm saying. You don't understand what I'm saying, you, you haven't done much in outdoor, because you should know what that means. And I have people say, what the freak is he talking about? Huh? Yeah, precisely, you don't know. It's the time when your screen activates. So if your projector's out at, if you're at four, what lumen count can you pick up at four? What's your minimum? Now, if you anything you pick up at, you put five thousand out there. That's not good, because what if a project company, somebody doesn't have a five thousand? What the minimum they have is a thousand. What's your pickup time? What's going to pick up? And when you activate, you have to activate perfectly, which means you have to show color, you have to show contrast, and you have to show white levels, and you have to just get the white surface because that's the surface you're going to be dealing with mainly when it comes to outdoor screens. So these tests have to be run. That's why when I go to your site and I look for outdoor and I go, okay, where's the pickup line at? Where does this screen actually start to trigger off? And it, what's, the, how, what's the sacrifice in contrast? What's the sacrifice in color? I need to see all that. But we don't see anything. There's nothing there. So I already know from the door, you haven't really tested the activation time. You don't know. But what's going to happen is when a company calls you, when does that screen fire up? What time of the day? Because keep in mind, the reason why you have to put that there because the minute you mention the screen is outdoor, you will have some customers trying to get that thing to fire up at 12 o'clock in an afternoon or 4 o'clock in an evening or 3 o'clock in the evening. And then you're going to be faced with, oh, I thought it worked outside. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. See what I mean? That's why you have to do your test. That's why you should have an activation time. So when I go to a site and I don't see anything there, but they're claiming it works outdoor, that doesn't mean jack to me there or anybody else. That clearly shows it's one of the flags you don't know what you're talking about. That's why I said activation time. So that lets us know where we can hit at. Now, if it picks up at a thousand lumens after it's seven o'clock, that's seven o'clock is a cakewalk for us. That's just easy to run anything out. You run 50 lumens at seven o'clock. That's easy. But a white screen can't run at 50 lumens at seven o'clock. Heck, it can't even run a, at eight o'clock properly on 4,000. And remind you, keep in mind, if you go out and you buy a projector with one of these babies over here, real high 5,000. 6,000, 7,000, you have introduced more light to the screen, which means it washes out even faster. That's why if you look at a screen on a 7,000 lumen projector, like you see in the promo demonstration, you're like, wow, that thing looks like crap. It's 7,000 hitting it. Screen, you're, you're washing out your screen. Can't absorb light. Somebody sent me a message about, well, does it, does it absorb and reflect? That's what AME light projection screen does. It does both. It absorbs light. And basically, it rejects light at the same time. It's not one or the other, it's both. When you have a white screen, a white screen is designed to not absorb. It can't even eject. It doesn't need either one of them. That's why when an image hits it, any light in the environment, the screen automatically washes out because there's no ambient light rejection technology. And when you do it in a dedicated theater room setup, this is why our lights out, you'll see light splash all over the ceiling because it can't absorb light. Where darker screens, basically have the ability to be able to reject light, but also to, or so ambient light rejection technology works better, they can absorb it. That's why when Black Diamond did the demonstration, when he brought the screen down and we did the demonstration, you wouldn't see any light pushing out. It would just disappear. I got to upload those demonstrations too, because the screen is now absorbing light at the same time. And when you can absorb light, that means you have the ability to pick up better colors because your colors wash out less along with the rejection technology. So if somebody comes in, they try to give me trick questions from time to time uh, to confuse me, to make it look like I don't know what I'm talking about. But when I explain everything to them, I break it down for them. Now I'm just insulting their intelligence. Oh, you ain't got to be rude about it. You wanted to answer your question. What's the problem? Oh, you thought I didn't know what I was talking about. All right, whatever. If, if you sit there and you watch, and I hate to say this, I hate doing these videos. Because I always mess up so badly. You know what I go. I go through these freaking research. I just research everything. So if you know I'm the type of person that will literally research a spoon at the end of the day on how a spoon is made. Who started doing engraving on spoons? What was the first spoon ever, ever developed? What were spoons made out before they are made out of silver? This kind of stuff the process through my head over a spoon. So if you know I'm that thorough, 
and research and stuff like that, what do you think it happens when I'm doing something that I'm dedicated to? I research everything. All right, now I got a little project to the side. I'm trying to figure out how to make cardboard screens completely weatherproof. Now, I've seen somebody else do it, but I want my own solution. I want to do it myself. Could it be kind of cool to have a cardboard screen outside? Like, hey, Jack, check that screen. It's cardboard. Is that thing freaking crazy or what? So, yeah. But the weatherproof screen, yeah, it's 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 a different element of, of screen. Mind you, when your screen's inside, it's not dealing with rain. It's not dealing with snow. It's not dealing with freezing temperatures. It's not dealing with any of that whatsoever. The only thing you have to worry about your screen on the inside is your five-year-old turn into a coloring book. That's basically about it. But other than that, um, no. Oh, that's another problem, too. That this individual did not think about childproof. So I had a customer, this is before we did black screens, we had a silver screen, whose uh, child turned their screen into a giant coloring book. Went down and wrote all over the screen. This is where you get into the problem of how fast the application can be applied. Because again, if it's an application that's going to have a bunch of instructions attached to it and it's going to be a complete freaking headache, then you're going to have to do that entire process all over again. And especially if the surface is so thin, and it's another problem with having thin solution screen paints, is the fact that they don't cover all that well due to the fact that um, images or, or, or anything can bleed right through the screen, which we saw in the demonstration. And I'm gonna bring it up, it's true, you made the product, I'm gonna bring it up. The Series C had an issue applying to primer because the primer kept pushing through the surface and it gave, it gave it this kind of like a English muffin kind of effect because that was the parts of the screen that was pushing through. So watching the demonstration up close and seeing how many times you would have to roll over the screen to get that to disappear, it was quite a lot. So you have to consider the fact that if your kids or something happens, somebody hits the screen, you have a party, somebody could spill food on, anything could happen to a screen inside. What is the repair time to fix this thing? Now, we make sure we paint our screens that we make sure we have enough paint left over just in case if you have to paint over a certain section or whatever, if it gets damaged, your kids touch it, whatever happens. It's a fast process. You're not gonna be going through one and three coats and some light roll, heavy roll, smear and paint around. No, you're not going to go through all that. You're just basically just going to ch -ch -ch and you're done. So if you have a screen paint, and the guy might want to listen to me on this one, and it's designed where the first application, you're not painting the screen, you're just smearing it around to get the screen. Is this what happens to someone that your kid comes in and they have sticky fingers or whatever, and they touch your screen? Or if they color on your screen? Kids throw things in the house all the time. Or something lands on the screen, something gets damaged, something, anything happens to the screen, period, anything. How do we fix this problem? What if it's outside? Oh, there's all kinds of stuff outside that will jack your screen up if it's out there. All kinds of stuff. All kinds of wildlife, birds, geese, whatever. They'll poop right on your screen. How do we fix that issue? So if I have to go through the, all the same process of basically taking the screen down, laying it flat to the ground because I can't paint it standing up as I've seen in the demonstrations, you're talking about big screens here. You're talking about 150s, 180s, 250s. You don't pull a 250 inch screen off a surface just to paint it, and then you have to lay this thing perfectly flat to the ground. You know how big a 250 inch screen is? They're quite huge. So consider the fact that when I repaint this, am I gonna go through that same process all over again to paint a screen of that caliber? There you go. There's a headache right there. There's an instant headache, and people don't think about this stuff when they're developing screen paints. They're repairing the screen itself. So how do we fix a repaired screen? It's gonna get stuff splattered on it. Or keep in mind, if it's outside and the screen's laying low, you have a problem of wind hitting it and mud and erosion will splash <laughs> right against your screen. I come outside, a 250 inch screen, you ain't, a duck can't miss that. A geese can't miss it. I had my screen hit a couple of times with freaking um, um, animal feces. A couple of times. And I go out there with the garden hose and go, Shh. and if it's marked pretty bad, like it's baked in really good, I just take the roller and go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's it, it's gone. It goes back to normal. But if you have to go through a process of painting the screen in, where you have to go through this, one, spread the paint around just to cover the screen, you're gonna spread the paint around for 250, 180, 150, even 120. That's a lot of work. You're gonna paint the entire screen or you're just gonna paint that one section, which is, this is why I said, when people use the word even application in their videos that you have to paint it, this particular way because you need to have an even application 
don't say that because you know what that does it's going to give you more complications because if you have the screen the whole screen requires an even application what's going to happen is say a bird poops in the center of your screen when you paint over that screen and say your screen requires a three coat application you now have six coats attached to your screen but you have six coats in that one section here but three are on the actual physical full screen so do you repaint the entire screen with an additional six coats even those particular areas are not even covered or not even hit by bird poop it's just that one particular area right there see that's the complications you fall into this is why you have to do research before you make screen paints because you make trouble for yourself so someone will say well wait a minute if it's a, it's going to be uneven in the middle because basically i had to put in extra three coats to cover up the bird poop no you basically I need a screen that you can just roll over and patch just roll over and patch and then the application process if you watched it if you're going to tell me that i have to go through the process of smearing the paint around for this surface if i have to put down a light coat and then a light roll and a heavy roll and all that nonsense and then on the middle piece where the birds poop in the middle of my screen i just have to put one coat and i'm done then what was the purpose of me doing all that to begin with when i first started the screen there you go customers going to ask that question too so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to do the same process that you did for the whole screen, but you're going to do it again for that little piece that a bird pooped on, that three-step process, which is going to be a freaking headache. And another problem you're going to have with a thin solution is the fact that the coverage, it's going to be pretty, coverage is going to be good. It's going to be to cover quite well because it's thinner, but basically how well it's going to be the masking capabilities, which means imperfections you may have in your surface that you can even cover with a paint that has a good, a good thickness to it, then a product that's too thin, and you're going to see every imperfection pulled through. And if that bird crapped on your screen and you couldn't get primer to cover up on your screen paint, then that means that bird poop and whatever God knows is going to hit your screen at the end of the day, it's going to push through and you're going to be out there rolling over and over again just to get it to disappear. See? And think about that, did you? I know about that stuff because I've been around for a long time. That's why the only, only time I talk about even application is when you're priming a surface. That's it. When you're priming a surface, any surface that you prime is a sponge. It's going to absorb. So the minute you paint on, you're going to notice that certain sections of the screens are going to be darker and some are going to be lighter because some areas absorb more and some absorb less. So to make sure the surface has an even application, to make sure it has an even balanced surface, you paint the screen with two coats and that gives it a solid surface no more paint can absorb through you cancel that out so when you paint our application on you have more paint number one because it's not been absorbed all through the screen and it gives you an even application where you don't have a lighter area here and a darker area here where the screen looks blotchy that's the only time we ask you to do that other than that if you have a bird craps on your screen you already did the process of basically painting the surface already to make sure it doesn't absorb you're good absorb you're good just roll over it and you're done and we'll do a demonstration like that I'm going to take a screen outside, throw a couple eggs against it, and we're just going to roll right over top and be done. But if you have to go through a process to paint the thing in the first place, you're going to go through a process to fix it. And that's what they don't think about. That's why you can't go in and make these statements about, oh, well, <sighs> paint the screen one time, paint the screen, take it outside. We didn't even see the process of painting the screen to take it outside. I never saw that. The only thing I saw was basic screen was already painted. It was sitting outside like, what the freak was the rest of the demonstration? You got to have more than that. Got to see how that thing's going to work outside. What's the process? If I got to do that painstaking process inside, I couldn't imagine outside. And again, I keep telling you, inflatable screens, that front and rear, good gracious, you're not rolling that on. You can't roll it on. It's virtually impossible. You'll jack your screen up. You'll definitely mess it up. But we got some test surfaces coming in. They're going to be cheap surfaces. We're going to show you what happens, the do's and don'ts, because it's more than me just to come in and tell you why I don't do it. We're going to show you why. We're going to mess up some screens and show you what happens. We're also, too, going to make a product very, very thin. We got a couple of thin products. We did our spray on applications. We're going to roll one on. Show you what happens if you're rolling a very thin product. Also, too, I'll show you with plexiglass. I told you, front and rear, you can't roll a front and rear screen in. If it has transparent capability where light transfers to it, sound depends on what surface you're using. Using plexiglass, you're not transferring any sound through that. But anyway, we'll show you what happens if you roll with a roller. And I don't care, I'm gonna go to Home Depot, get the most smoothest roller I can get in my hands on, and I'm gonna show you, you'll mark your screen. That's why no company anywhere makes a rear projection screen that has a roll-on application. Every single one has to be sprayed in. That's why I know that when certain people talk, they don't know what they're talking about. And outdoors, Come on, man, you're, you're talking about a whole different environment. 
anything can go wrong out there. And like I said, birds, animals, a spray on your screen. You see some yellowish on your screen. I'm like, what the freak is that? Skunks. I had skunks in my neighborhood. They were constantly spraying the screen. I don't know what the mating call was with that screen. But every time I turned around, it was spraying my screen. And at 250 inches, when you have wild geese flying over top of your house, they're not missing that target. So you have to have something easy that you can basically clean the screen down in no time at all. If it's going to be difficult, it's going to have a lot of complicated instructions. When you're painting it on inside, imagine what happens when something gets damaged to the outside. And mind you, when you have a screen outside, mind you, it's the screen that kids are going to be around, your pets are going to be around. So if you're having a barbecue, whatever, and Johnny just throws, so, tries to throw a hot dog at his sister, and she ducks and hits the screen, you clean that mess up. You got a mustard, mayonnaise, whatever you have on the hot dog, all over your screen. Matter of fact, we'll do that demonstration too. We'll show how easy they are to clean. So if it ever comes up and says, hey, what if someone has food, we'll show you. I hate to waste food, I really do. I have to find something expired. I really have to find something expired because I really don't want to waste any food. <clears throat> I'll get some condiments, that's what I'll do. I'll get some mustard and ketchup and we'll throw it on the screen. And then we'll just basically take it, we'll let it dry. I want to make sure it's dry first. Let it dry and then we'll spray it down and just roll over top and be done. I brought that up a couple of times when I was looking at the, the painstaking application, and it's not just him, I've seen a couple of people with these painstaking uh, applications for their indoor screens. And I thought, well, if this stuff is outdoor, do I have to go through the same process? Because remember, you're dealing with a much bigger screen on top of that. And then on top of that, the surface that they make for our side, that soft PVC, is extremely temperamental. Like, is this stuff gonna crack? Is it gonna peel? It's gonna fuse together? Another issue you have with doing fixed frame screens outside, I've done dozens of fixed frame screens outside, I told you before, that the velvet that they put around the screen, if this stuff gets, if water hits it, it can bleed right into your screen. So now you got these traces of drip marks in your screen where the velvet bled into the screen. Did they explain anything to you about that? No. You know why? Because they don't know what they're talking about. So you'd have bought that screen paint, applied that to a, a fixed frame screen, and if it had rained that night, you just came outside, you'd have had these lines all in your screen because the velvet bled into your screen. Now, because I have experience in that field, I built tons of screens outside. What we do is we poly. When we take apart the, the screen before we put it together, we poly everything so that we make sure that everything, number one, is protected, it's not going to rust, no issues with that, and we're not going to have any bleeding into the screen. That's why I said this is the stuff that I can teach you when it comes to outdoor applications, because if they're not explaining this to you, and they're coming on camera going, oh, look, look at the image, look at this, so, 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 blah, blah, blah. You don't even know what you're talking about. I can ask you 100 questions from here from Sunday, and you can't answer any of them because you don't know what you're talking about. This is why we're always met with emojis and all that stuff, because, again, insecurities, and they don't know what they're doing. So, fixed frame screen. If you have a screen majority, most fixed frame screens that you buy, you're going to paint these, we're going to do one outside, we're going to do a motorized too. These fixed frame screens, they usually have a divider in the middle. The old ones didn't. The old ones had a solid piece all the way across. And this is why when you ship the screen, it costs you a little bit more money because they had to ship this huge screen because if you had a screen that was 150 inches, and the screen was seven feet across, it was just seven feet across and your box became seven feet across. So now the new screens, they break them in the middle so they can... Put them in a little package, and now when you get 150 inch screen, it's in this little box. You go, well, how do you fit this whole thing in this little box? Because they separate in the middle piece. It makes it shorter. The sides are automatically going to be shorter. This is the part that's going to cost you more in freight. So they figure a way to snap that in half. You make the screen much smaller. The shipping costs less. But what you have with that screen right there on top of that, keep in mind that if you put this thing outside, if you have it against a wall, you're good. But if you have it up on your deck, and wind can hit the back of it, you'll bend your screen just like this. It'll bend like that. That's what'll happen. So you have to make sure that when you put that screen up, you're gonna have to have L brackets at the bottom so the screen doesn't shift out from underneath of you. That can happen. Remember, wind's gonna hit in the back of the screen constantly all the time. You have to make sure that when you tether the screen down, that when you connect it to the back, that it's tethered down to the railings, that that middle piece is tethered down because if it's not, when that wind hits it, it's gonna bend it's going to hold here, but it's going to bend in the middle. And it's going to push your screen out, and it's going to turn into an arch and damage your screen. I had that happen to a screen. And that's how I learned that next time I put them up on the deck, 
to make sure that they're secured all the way to the bottom because I have one push out and make sure that middle piece is secured. Is your paint in a fixed frame screen? We've done dozens of paint on fixed frame screens. One of the things you don't do, do not remove the bar out of the back of the screen. This is going to be a nightmare to put back in. Mind you, you have a tension screen. So all those springs wrapped around your screens are compressing the screen and pushing it down. And the reason why that bar is there, because if you have a screen that separates from the top, it's going to cause the screen to curve into a U. That's what's going to happen. It's going to push it down. So that's what you need that bar to do. It's pushing all that pressure all the way around the screen. You take that out, you're going to have a nightmare putting that thing back in. And you don't want to take apart a screen that you already previous painted. Because again, someone told you that information, they didn't know what they're talking about. A PVC screen, real quick, so I'm going to explain this to you. So you can get something here. Motorized projection screens and fixed frame screens are two different surfaces. The surface for a fixed frame screen is much more rigid, much more stiffer because it's made to feed into a motor. The PVC surface is much more soft because it's designed to stretch like a drum around the frame to give you a real tight image that's what it's designed for. So what happens is once you paint over that, that stretchiness of the screen no longer exists. It's gone. So now your screen becomes a stiff surface. Now if you take this thing apart, you're going to have a really hard time trying to stretch it right back over the frame because that elastic there that makes the screen stretch is no longer there anymore. And that makes it 10 times even worse to bring it back. So you might just toss the whole thing out and start all over again. Do not take these things apart once you put them together. Bad advice. We do it all the time. I've done dozens of these screens to back it up. I've done 235, 180, 135. You name it, we've done them. We've done 80s and 92s and whatever. You pad the back of the bar. That's what you do. So when you roll the screen, the screen's going to expand out anyway because it's constantly stretching because it's on that, support, that spring support system. It's going to go out nice and flat, but you just pad it. That's all you do. A towel, a tablecloth doesn't really make a difference. I learned that the hard way. I built a 250, a 200, 200 screen in my home. And I had these rails here, here, and here to support the, the, the frame. And I'm sitting there watching something, and I see these lines popping. I'm like, what the freak is that? And I thought it was from the projector at first. And I find out that I left an imprint mark in the screen when I rolled over top of it. So I put bed sheets behind the back of it and rolled over again, and it disappeared. And that's how I found out. You find out through trial and error. That's how you learn. But if you don't do testing, and you don't do enough demonstrations, and you don't have enough experience on your belt, you don't know. So that's how you know. And it's interesting because I'll tell people this stuff and then later on they'll do it, but they'll act like they came with the idea. Okay, whatever, as long as it works. But yeah, so that PVC material, and the person was telling you to take the bar out, you do that, that's going to be your own personal nightmare. You take that thing apart and think you're going to restretch that thing back over a frame, that's going to be another personal nightmare. Advising you to buy Shelby's? No. Yes, you're into weightlifting. If you're in a weightlifting shelf, be fantastic for you. That'd be a fantastic workout. That shelf, yeah, a couple of them. Oh my goodness, the, the fixed range screens. I can, I can talk about a whole series on fixed range and to tell you about this. There's a difference between the 235.1s and the silver tickets. There's a difference between the elite screens and the Shelby's and I had a couple other ones that actually were pretty good. I had one that was actually better than the elite screen. It was cheaper too. It was a 135 inch screen. I get past all this something else it was a 135 inch screen but you're going to have some screens that are going to have a uh the corners that snap the screens together they can be made out of plastic a, a mixture of plastic and aluminum do you know what that does a snap that's what happens and if one of those snap that means your screen's going to be awkward it's going to be bent a little bit like this because it's not laying flat because the screen snapped on the um, support frame and it's pushing out a little bit some of these companies will make the springs too short, which means you have to turn into the Incredible Hulk just to get the spring to basically go over the tension rail and to hit the back of the screen. Someone connect it behind the frame, there's a little piece back there, a little, little wedge that you take your spring and you push it back there. But it's kind of difficult to do this if they make the springs too short, that becomes a nightmare. Oh man, some of the fixed spring springs are not made out of aluminum. They're made out of actual metal and they're freaking heavy as I don't know what. The Shelby was a nightmare to carry up and down the stairs. The Elite screens, on the other hand, super lightweight. 126 inch screen, like I said, carried it down my driveway with one hand. So, you know, you know, you don't want a screen that weighs a ton hanging up on your wall because you don't secure this thing right, it's definitely coming down. 
if you're doing levitating projection screens, did they ever tell you about levitating tech, doing a lev no, no, how to build a levitating screen? No, you don't know what they're talking about. Can't just take fishing line and stick it to your ceiling. You have to figure out how much pressure that the fishing line can take compared to how much pressure the screen. What's the heaviest screen you ever did on a tension? Not tension, heaviest screen you ever did on levitation. I would rather do, now what I know now, I would rather do a cardboard screen. Uh, I forgot the name of that, that uh, the more the heavier cardboard, but it's three, we call it three tile. I would use that any day. I've done a, I'd say probably about a 20 pound, 120 inch, 126 inch, I, that was the 4K screen, levitating the screen. That was something else. That was a heavy freaking screen. I was shot, I was scared, because I really feel like I can hear the tension on the line, like put me, like I feel it's gonna snap one day. One of them did snap. Hit the floor, boom! I was like, what the freak was that? I thought a car hit the house. Screen snapped. So that's day, mind you. I don't have any kids, but imagine if there were kids or pets walking around and that thing happened. So yeah, you have to know what you're doing when you're doing levitating screens. So if they're not giving you this kind of information in their videos, then they don't know what they're doing. And when it comes to outdoor screens, again, you're outside in a very temperamental environment that, again, from six ways from Sunday, it's going to jack your screen up. That's why you need years of testing on this stuff. Years of testing. If you're doing motorized projection screens, you should be to go in and explain to your customers the difference between a weatherproof, real weatherproof, motorized projection screen and one's not. You should know the difference. If you don't know the difference between the two, then you're going to inform someone to go out and put a motorized projection screen outside and say, hey, my product's weatherproof. Your product may be weatherproof, but guess what? That projection screen ain't weatherproof, so it's going to have some problems. You got to be in the front. You got to be in the know this stuff. So you can't be telling people to stick anything out there or so much stuff could have issues. Now, the fixed frame screens, one of the issues they have, and, you, and I'm glad we figured this out before we, you know, we continued on doing weatherproof uh, technology for outdoor screens. If you have a fixed frame screen, what's going to happen is if you use the same paints that these guys like to use, what's going to happen is the sun's going to hit the back of your screen. And when the sun hits the back of your screen, you're going to notice these little tiny bubbles that are going to pop up on the opposite side. This is where actually heat gets in between the screen and moisture picks up and the surface separates which means that those little pockets that are picking up, this is where you got moisture in between the screen pane and between the PVC surface and the heat is generating this. And your next side, you'll have this kind of like pimple bubble effect all over your screen. Like, wow, what the heck is that? And you pop one of these, it's just going to leave a little tear. That's what's going to happen. And that's going to be a mess to clean up because what's going to happen is you can't just paint over top of that because it's kind of like, um, you know, if you watch somebody like they shave off the paint and then they try to paint over top of it and you still see the edges of the previous paint, the marks all in it, that's what it's going to look like. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to figure out how to get all that previous paint off or you're going to have to basically just replace the entire surface, which I've done that before. And it's a freaking nightmare to replace the surface once you jack it up and try to get it back from the company or repay for one. It takes forever to get there. God knows where it could come from. Majority, most of the stuff, probably most of the time it's not even shipped within the United States if it's not. Whoever you bought the screen from could be another country where you got it from. So they take a lot, twice as long to get there. So you make sure you get that one right. So I'm, happy, I'm glad it happened to us when it happened because then it gave me a more insight on different ways on how to develop different formulas for outside just in case of something like that were to trigger off. And this is the stuff you need to know when you're setting up outside. And this is nothing. This is nothing compared to stuff you need to know. There's projector positioning. I know all that too. You know, you got to know if a customer is saying, hey, we got this big old party coming up. We got all these people coming in. How are we positioning the projector? How are you going to position the projector? How are you going to set it up where people are not walking in front of it and their heads are not bobbing all over the screen? And they're getting blasted in the face with a 5,000 lumen projector. How are we going to set this up? New thought to be color remix. Now, if you say you're going to do ultra short throw, what if your product's not ultra short throw compatible? Have you tested your product outside? Mine, you're doing a lot more light in your ambient light controlled environment and off the shirt though you're outside so how is that even going to work do you have any tests on this whatsoever and i'm not talking about tests by throwing a projector out. i'm talking about different color level tests white level tests all that has to be displayed what time of the day is this going to react am i do this at how early in the morning can i get it to react you got to have all that out there everything we've done demonstrations in snowstorms at 180 inches in the snow 
The reason why I like doing snow demonstrations, because if you go outside and you, you what do you call it, snow blind? You walk outside, you can't see Jack, because everything, all that light's being transferred all over the place. You put sunglasses on, you can see crystal clear. That's why I like doing demonstrations in the snow, because there's 10 times more light making hit in the screen. Everything is infected. The projector's infected. Camera, everything is infected by it. That's why I love it. Much more of a challenge. So we do demonstrations in the snow. And rain. Yeah. Rain's very important because rain will darken the screen. The screen gets wet, they become dark. So can your screen maintain the same brightness if it's soaking wet? That's why we did the demonstration. We froze the screen into a block of ice. That screen was soaking wet when we did the demonstration. On top of that, by freezing the screen and hitting the screen with a hammer over and over again, even heating it up, soaking it in hot water, it didn't crack or peel. So that technology is embedded in all the stuff we have now. So if you're not seeing any of this stuff, no. Paint on your outdoor screen, see what happens. But we're going to do a couple of tests. We're going to show you why PV surface is, is temperamental. We're going to show you basically how easy it is to repair the screen. Once somebody does throw a hot dog at your screen, or basically when your kids urinate, no, say your kids don't urinate, the dog urinates the screen. Oh, no, 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 no. I've seen that one too. Yeah, kids got to go, they got to go. If no one's looking, they're going to go. But anyway, yeah, so, and on, adults do it too on top of that. Drunk what are you doing, Bob? Get the freak away from my plants! So yeah. Okay, what are we at for time here? Because I got a boogie today. Keep on dancing, keep on dancing. I'm, I'm glad the air I was born in. The air I was born in, I was in all kinds of music. Listen to everything. All right, so we get the new coat, new technology. So we spray on application only. It's very easy to use. Anyone can spray them in. It's very easy. Your kid can, well, if your kid can operate, the older kids can do it. The younger ones can operate the roller arms. But yeah, very easy to spray on. I'm just going to blast over stuff. We're going to do a lot of inflatable projection screens to show how easy to convert your light projection screens into OLED black or OLED light black technology. You're going to be able to pick up an Infinity One contrast level, which means you're picking up real contrast. No fakes, no shades of gray, 100% black. You're going to pick up amazing white levels and colors are going to be absolutely immaculate. And when you go outside and watch a demonstration or whatever you're watching, movie sports, you're going to notice that your screen's going to look the exact same way that your TV looks inside. And your neighbors, well, they're going to be quite impressed by your setup. I guarantee you. Watch. Come outside and say, what kind of TV is that? And you got to say, that's not a TV. That's a projection screen. One of the demonstrations we're doing for the rear technology we're working on, we have, we're actually going to coat a piece of plexiglass and we're going to put TVs around it. So people think it's a TV. It's going to be designed to look like a TV, but except for it's actually a projection screen. It's, that's the kind of advertising you have to do. If you're good at marketing, you can, you can market just about anything, but you have to market to try to get into someone's head that, so they can basically draw their attention. That's what ad tech is for. Ad tech can advertise your sneakers, food, whatever you want, right through glass and bring it to life. And a person can look at your entire menu like, wow, that's freaking crazy. Not only do they memorize by seeing this technology pushed through glass, but to see your advertisement, the way it's supposed to look, not faded, not washed out on a white or gray screen, the actual advertisement, what it looks like. If they open up a brochure, it should look the same way in the brochure as it should look at on the screen. But yeah, you have to get into people's heads. You have to do it that way. One of the demonstrations I remember doing that I had two projectors set up. One was a 1080p, one was a 720p. We had the, both projectors were made to look like we're using a 1080p only. We're gonna use a 1080p demonstration, or we're gonna use mostly 720p's at the time. We're gonna use a 1080p projector that we're using, playing the specifications, so and so and so. Everybody thought that was the projector we're using. It wasn't, it was a 720p the entire time. And then we pulled it back and showed it was 720p, it just blew their minds. If they can actually get an image that beautiful for 720p, and a 1080p was not required. Stuff like that. I remember one time I did a demonstration where uh, the other fellow had his little group. The Crow Boys, what they call themselves. But anyway, they were coming to my channel and they would act up and carry on. So we took his paint 
and we put it against a wall. We put the sample sheets against our black screen, and we put a fish image up. So this screen was camouflaged. Our screen camouflaged the screen. So we did a live chat, and we said, hey, what do you think is better, his product or ours? And all these guys came in talking all this trash, talking about, well, his product is the best, and this, blah, blah, that, and blah, blah, that, not realizing that they were staring at his screen the entire time. They just couldn't see it because their screen had camouflaged it. And I said, oh, really? So our screen is trash? Yeah, your screen is trash. It's garbage. I don't know anybody would buy it. Did that and the other, blah, blah, blah. I talked all this trash. I was setting them up. So the minute I said, okay, no problem. And I took my hand and I put it over top the projector and the sample sheets were up there. I said, now, what did you say about my product again? Let me show you. So I put a star field on, his screen disappeared. I started showing these high grade colors, his screen disappeared. We just swapped out projectors, his screen disappeared. Didn't even work at all. And then we showed the white levels and the screen couldn't turn our screen um, dark as you claimed it did. And then they all just left the room one by one. Yeah, it's a huge piece of humble pie. I could have swore I heard later on the day somebody choking off a dry piece of humble pie. I like doing demonstrations like that. One of the demonstrations I got set up for when we do on site is a curtain system where you're going to look like think you're looking at the screen. That's the screen, but it's not. I'm going to show a nice, beautiful white scenery, snowstorm, the whole nine yards, and they're going to think that that's the image coming up. And I want them to go, oh, wow, because, you know, people are thinking they do this. Oh, wow, that white levels are really, really good. Not realizing that they're not really seeing the real screen. The real screen is behind that surface. Oh, my goodness. I mean, that's, that's incredible. And then we just pull it back and show where it really does. Boom. There you go. You got to know how to you got to know how to advertise. Just like that new other new technology we're working on. The um, we got a black technology. Another one. Can't talk about that too much. And there's another one that we're working on. Basically, our next step is to replace OLED TVs. So, one of the demonstrations I want to do is I want to go in and I want to buy OLED TV, take it out of the box, paint over the box with our technology, and use it to take on an OLED. And the only technology we have that has the capability is that technology that can absorb sunlight. Because our screen can go outside, you can stick our screen to a window, and sun can push an image right through it. We can watch on the other side, where if you stick an OLED up to that window, your screen will wash out. Not only that, it'll destroy your pixels cause your screen or damage your screen can't do that so it shows at the end of the day why our technology is more superior than a tv and the beautiful thing about this is instead of you going out and spending the money for an ultra short though projector that's going to claim that it has tv like capabilities and will give you the ability to be able to uh use your ultra short though like a tv which you will never be able to do because you don't have the proper screen for it our technology will allow a $60 projector that costs far less than your projector be able to produce and achieve that goal. And that tells the customer at the end of the day, I don't got to spend a lot of money for a projector. Because we could do it on that NEC right over there. All right, where are we at for time here, people? Because um, I got to get cracking, Jackson. I got some stuff I want to do. Oh, let's see, um, 4K demonstrations. That was a problem. You know, companies come out with these big expensive projectors. You want that TV-like experience, you got to spend that 4100 you got to spend that 32 whatever you got to pay at the end of the day. You want to achieve that contrast, you get $2 million to one, whatever, you got to pay that money for it. Our technology... Your projector could be 4,000 to 1 contrast. You would still pick up an infinity contrast level that a P2 at a 2 million to 1 couldn't even achieve on a gray or white screen. Like right now, this projector right here has an infinity 1 contrast on it right now. And it has no contrast rating at all. No contrast rating at all. So, just imagine that. Your ultra short throw, your investment machine that you paid for. We could do that demonstration on an Optima GT55 outside and we can max our screen. Which means the Optima GT55 is in Hojin 56 when I first got them. They were like, they only do uh, 100. You can't do one. Well, it's 126 inches. 
then I remember we got black technology and to worry about that. We can expand our screen size if we want and not lose any picture quality, nothing. We could do that outside at 140 inches on that projector. The biggest I got out of an Optima GT55, uh, 55 and 56 is a 160 inch screen. I'll show you that demonstration. I'll upload it and show you. 160 inch screen. And mind, that projector is 1920 by 1080p, where we can do it at a projector at 720p, way below that, at 150 inches. So, we're getting ready for the new technology to be coming out soon. This is going to be our new weatherproof coating. Summertime is a coming, if it's not over here already. It's nice and warm outside today. Take your movies, your sports, your video games, whatever at the end of the day. Go outside. And you have to worry about looking at this washed out screen. It's kind of sad when your cell phone will be so better than the screen that you're watching. That's pretty sad. Technology we have and we design, you won't be able to tell one from the other. So you can take your, like I said, everything everything's so much better outside, it really is. Sit there and look under the stars. I can't wait to get the cutout. We can't do it where I'm at right now because I told you we have issues with people who stall. But we got a nice little backyard out there. Trim everything down. I go out there and cut everything down. And we're going to set a nice screen up there, put a little nice little rug out there. And we're going to basically do some demonstrations up there. And then, once we get that, do little demonstrations there. When I get everything else assembled and set up, we're picking up the inflatables. I'm picking up a couple of those. My neighbor's going to get a few of them. I'm going to do some dememonstrations for them. They're going to do some, do some demonstrations. We're going to use their back here for a bit, get a free screen. You know what I mean? You'll love that. And then we're going to take the big boy, the big boy, the one we're going to get, the big guy, the 24, I think it's 24 across, whatever it is. We're taking that over to the park because I got my paperwork and permits and stuff, so I can do that. And then I'm going to go get another permit to do one over here at the other park near the um, art museum. We're going to do one over there. I'm going to put some cartoons on for the kids. I'm going to watch some cartoons and stuff, show off the black screen. We're going to have to sit there for a while um, before we fire it up to show the screen is all black. I don't want people to walk over to it. I want them to look at it, ask questions and stuff like that about the new technology. And that's going to basically call that stuff to fire off because I'm planning with this new outdoor technology to mask everything with this technology. I mean, the only screens we see out there on the market right now, like I said, are white screens. And if we can show that this technology side by side, which we've done our testing, we should be good on that, that there's a big difference between our black technology and a white surface, it's not going to be hard to do. Sooner or later, they'll be asking questions like, do you guys do indoor too? Oh, yeah, we do. And then the benefit for our customers, well, like I said, you can have that TV-like experience outside. I'll tell you one thing. You fire up the screen at a barbecue, you're going, they're going to keep coming back. They're definitely going to keep coming. You might have a couple of them camp out in your backyard. And it's going to bring us a lot of money because they're going to know where you got it from. I got somebody already, got a couple customers already. Uh, they're going to be doing some demonstrations in their backyards. We're going to be sending them over to paint. They're going to be doing some demonstrations for us. So you get a chance to see somebody else with it besides us. And you'll get a chance to see reactions from other people in the park that are going to be looking at the new technology. Now, we have it at, let me see what our price for this is. We have one gallon. This is the only gallon that's going to be available on the site. All the technology is tested. will be tested. Batch number, guarantee. We do ship batch. You know how we do things at the end of the day. And um, we are going to do some other testing on it before we even launch this thing because I do want to know how this stuff is going to react to PVC. Very important. All right, let me see what we got here. Oh, these are all I have to out of stock on here. Can I click on it? I can't click on it. The price is I'm actually in editing mode. Got it being editing. Look at that. Let me see. I'm going to write this stuff down, bird. Okay, we were in. I was in doing shipping updates yesterday. Okay, so I'm putting that in the shipping updates. Now, as I said before, the one gallons. Are going to come with a free popcorn machine sorry for anybody overseas we do apologize but it's too expensive to ship overseas but we are going to hook you up with some really cool lead lights i really like them we'll hook you up with some chasers you'll love those things they're actually beautiful and they are fully weatherproof so you don't have to worry about that they will be tested by the way i got a garden hose i will be spraying you can't submerge these things and when they're submersible there's a difference between submersible light and weatherproof lights. So, we'll show you when I'm getting electrocuted. <laughs> oh man, things that I like to do. 
and I've done tests on weatherproof lights. I've actually, and the reason why, I bought these weatherproof lights, strung them up, and then we had a rainstorm and he died. And I'm like, what the freak is it supposed to be weather? I tear all those lights up, and now I just spray them down with the garden hose to test them first to see if they're going to be, they're going to jack up, but yeah. There it goes so low. All right, let me see. Um, Alright, let's just make some information for you real quick. Oh, what the heck is going on here? Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Never mind, we're gonna have to do the demonstration. That sound bar, I'm like, why is the sound bar not on? Alright, I have no idea why the sound bar is not on. What is this operating? We got uh, push up at a workout. Okay, twice in my workout. Um, we have um, we have one gallon goes for three hundred and seventy-eight dollars. That comes for those in the United States for your popcorn machine. Uh, and those are not. We have lead lights. So we're going with those. We're saying the chaser is weatherproof. You like them? I'm gonna test them out. Check how amazing they look. Um, those right now with the uh one quart which is uh 276 and that comes with the free lead lights on either, either side doesn't make a difference all right that's good you can carve that thing down Oh man, I've had a busy day today. A real busy day today. At least the weather's good. And I gotta call a customer to about a screen to on top of that. I mean, I heard I reached a couple of people today. We got sample sheets coming in. I got the Elite Yard Master coming through. Let me see. Come on, man. We don't need all that. Just give me what I want. I can't somebody give you updates for your phone. Like you get like a menu within a menu on your app. Like, well, I don't need all that. Just let me hit the menu. That's what I gotta do. Come on now. Don't do too much. Don't wait too much. Make it simple. 
Elite Yardmaster projection screen. All right, so the door. The door is actually the front and rear. That's what they have. That's around $354. That screen is not black. That screen is 100% white or gray. So you won't be seeing any contrast. You won't read any color in any way whatsoever. You pick up your white level, that's basically about it, and you will not be able to fire that thing up in the time of the day. We're going to be sitting outside. So again, we're going to show you that against the Yardmaster. So this is a 120-inch screen, our lowest hit is 278 and it paints the screen size up to 150 inches this is our competition right now because again it's a white screen and any white screen you can know if this goes up against black technology it's not going to be to survive because we can read the infinity and that is required especially if you're out there it's definitely required to read a 100 contrast level so we'll show you some demonstrations with the yardmaster We'll show you demonstrations and outside, because a lot of people say, we get this all the time, well, we're going to be outside in the dark anyway. I don't see much of a difference. We'll show you. We'll show you an ultra short throw. We'll show you on short throw. We'll show you on uh, the Pico projectors, so the portables, because we got some portable screens coming out, uh, theater on the go. And uh, we're um, basically going to show you on uh, Old Faithful over here, and then we'll bring up the big boy venues and show you. And if you do upgrade to high power machines, you still can't read it. So that's what I'm going to be picking up. That's 120 inch. Can you imagine what the, what, uh, see, the our gallons can do up to a 200 inch screen? You know how much that would cost you for a 200 inch screen? Oh, they got it in a 200 inch screen. Let me see something for a minute. 135. Oh, uh, yeah, they got 200 inches. If we got a price here for this thing. I have a 200 inch. I'm trying to figure out what my cost would be for a 200 inch. For telling you, don't look big. So, a 200 inch of this screen is going to cost you in the price range of $1,467.85. That's why when I talk about my price, the first people go is, well, the only people got to sell is the naysayers. You got to sell about that. Oh, I shouldn't get that much money for my price. I should be getting far more than that. Especially when we did, we're taking out $5,000, $7,000 screens inside. And then outside, this screen's going to cost you almost $1,500. And it can't even read an infinity contrast level. Under a product that's under $400, bucks, I can do it. That's the reason why customers pay for stuff. And you're going to have to back all that up. Like I said, everything I just mentioned, I got to go out in there and do it. I got to throw food against the screen because, again, it's going to come up. Or if somebody throw food against the screen, what's, what's, the, what's, the, what's the repair time process on it? All that has to be done. Different forms of surfaces. What's going to be temperamental? What's going to, not going to work? What is going to work? All that stuff. I even got a heat gun over there. Basically, if I want to test the screen with extreme heat, we got them over there. We got everything we need to do these tests. And the one screen I am going to test against, which I said one of the screens we'll have to do, is the Yardmaster. Which I'm curious, what colors are we getting this thing in? So it's probably coming in. Okay. Frame. Get the frame with it. So it does come with a frame, though. But let me see. Does it have the color of it? The 180 is 1,230. Let's see. So that one. Because I've seen Yardmasters out there. I've seen them. And a couple of yard masters out there. So what is this surface color? Because I know they don't have black, and then they don't have gunmetal. I've never seen a gunmetal screen outside ever. So chances are it's white. And if it's white, what they're going to tell you is that your contrast and color and all that relies on your projector. Which means if that relies on your projector, that means you're going to have to spend more money for a projector to get it to work. And you're going to find out it's not going to work. So they'll push that on the projector. 
and people have so projectors will tell you the same thing too well you have a projector with a high contrast and better color and higher resolution and brighter lumens you can pick the image up which means all in all you're going to spend more money for a projector either way you're going to spend more money for a projector well, we'll come out there and do a demonstration and your projector will be under a hundred bucks or under two hundred dollars this projector we're going to use in the demonstration these right here everything we have is under the 500 mark hmm. that's going to be interesting all right people hope you enjoyed uh, we don't have a date yet when that technology is going to launch and the reason why we don't because we have a lot of testing to do first we make sure everything's working perfectly fine i don't want customers painting this on a uh, pvc surface nothing happened to stick or anything goes wrong we going to make sure everything is tested quite well. And that way you got the reinsurance that whatever you're buying from us at the end of the day is properly tested. All screens will go through batch number verifications, which means they'll go outside, they'll go through verification testing to make sure the screen is working perfectly fine before it's shipped to your front door. And all this technology does require a black on black. If you don't know what those are, this is where we test the products against black sheets, black surfaces, everything you can think of under the sun. Even if the surface has a black back, we flip around the other side, coat one side of it, and show you that even if you turn the screen around backwards, it's still not going to be the matter technology. So that way you get exactly what you pay for. And in the long run, you don't get ripped off because nobody wants to get ripped off. All right, with that being said, be safe out there. Enjoy your Saturday. I got to go. And of course, we thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for blessing us with the amazing technology. Because again, if it wasn't for him, this wouldn't exist. We will be back later on tonight to do some demonstrations outside because I do want to test. This is already coated with this stuff. I want to get a chance to test why it's so crumbled up because I've been taking it down and I've been balling it up and shoving it in the corner back there. That's what I've been doing with it. So we are, it's already showing they can take a little stress. You can see it's pretty beat up surface, but we're going to take it outside. We're going to play with it a little bit today. We're going to bring Old Faithful. That's all we need. And it has to come with that. I might bring the Ultra Short though too because I'll leave an Ultra Short still on top of that. All right, people, got to go. Be safe out there and God bless.